Hi, Jason with Tormach. We got a fun little video for you guys today. Thanks for coming to check it out. Um, I was running around on the family farm and I was playing with one of our utility carts and I had to build a couple new components for it and fix some stuff. And I needed a motor coupling. Uh, I wasn't able to get the exact sizes that I needed on both. So I went ahead and, and ordered one, but it ended up not working. I thought I'd be able to put a bushing in here, but it ended up just not really working out well and holding. Um, so I just went ahead and modeled this thing up in Fusion 360 quick, and then we, we made one. So it was a fun little project. We got a lathe op, a couple mill ops. Um, as you can see, we worked through this thing, and we got this nice little component. Fits up really well. And uh, so let's walk through how we made it and the steps that we took to make this part. So you can see on the, we're on the lathe here. We just turned some custom soft jaws uh, to hold the stock. We're just using an 80 degree diamond to do all the turning and facing work. We just did all the programming for this all in the conversational, so it's just a quick profiling toolpath that we created. We came back with a drill, uh, just under a half inch, we just use it to rough out the bore, to bring the boring bar back in and do the finished work. The bore finished right at a half inch, so we just drilled it, I think about 15 thousandths under size, and then just brought the boring bar in to bring it to final size. You can see here we took a quick measurement just to get our size and to be able to fit the part to it. And then we just made a change in the cutter compensation. Um, we just went ahead and made the uh, x wear value a couple thousands bigger. And then on the restart, if you click on the screen somewhere, you can see I just touched that toolpath line and it jumped me to that section of the program. It's kind of a quick, easy way to search the file as well. You could also use the find command on the MDI line. We kind of just ran through that a couple times to get it to size. Here's some footage of the parting tool. Um, we just cut this off. I left just a little bit of stock there, as you can see, so I could reach in and just break the part off so I didn't just send it flying around the machine. So we got to cut the vice jaws here quick for our little motor coupling on the first mill app. I'm not real sure how deep I need to cut them. I'd like to hold on to at least a couple hundred thou to get some good locating and holding on this. So I'm just going to kind of quick and dirty check here. Here's my slitting saw that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to put it in the slot on the existing part, and I'm just going to measure the depth. I'm just looking for a quick number, you know, so we got about 400 thousandths there. You know, so if I hold on to the, the part by about 200, you know, I'll have 200 thousandths clearance between the vice jaw and the nut itself on the saw arbor. So we should be good to be able to just program this at 200 thousandths deep. While I was checking this, I also decided I should probably look to make sure that my slitting saw had enough reach to be able to put the slot in. Um, and as you can see, I'm about 50,000 short. Um, I'll take the saw off of it and I'll chuck it back in the lathe with the nut and everything on it and go ahead and, and just turn the OD of this down so that I have a little bit more clearance. This is bloody hard, this would be good. So here we are back in the lathe again with the saw arbor. This is made out of an alloy steel, so we ended up running this right around 200 surface footage, I think. And uh, you can see the chips are just starting to turn color. You can also hear the high-pitched chatter that I had initially. I backed the RPM slider bar up. I just ended up backing up to right around 90% of what I had it programmed at, and it quieted that cut right up. So you can see as it's finishing up here, it, the surface finish and everything looks really nice, and the cut sounds nice. In the design process of this part, I grabbed some pieces of scrap that I had laying around, and I threw them in the mill just to test the profile, because. You know, I literally grabbed a caliper and started measuring it up to kind of get a rough idea. I went through a couple of revisions on it to get everything to fit nicely and everything. So I was just this is some footage of um, it's just a test piece we cut. I think we had you know 15 or 20 minutes and finding a piece of stock and cutting some jaws quick and just working through the process of, of cutting this single feature on the part so we could test the fitment of the rubber bushing here. So here's the project in Fusion. Um, you can see we have two different setups. We just used the adaptive roughing strategy to rough out the inside of this part. Came back with the 2D contour to do just finish up, and we did use wear compensation on that. When we use wear compensation, we set the compensation type to wear. And then what this does is it still compensates for the radius of the tool, so then in the control on the offsets page, we can just keep our tool diameter at zero, and then if we need to make a change, we can go plus or minus, you know, a thousandth or two whatever change that we need to make. Came back with a quick little drill mill, a quarter inch drill mill here to do the chamfering. And then we have the saw to put in the groove. 
I took some pretty light depths of cut. I think it was only about 100 thousandths per pass on this. Pretty conservative, but as you'll see, we did run into a couple problems with the saw that came down to user error and setup problems. Then we just have OP2. We just use the end mill here to helically bore the counter bore out. Came back with the spot drill, the quarter inch drill mill to drill and spot for the tab drill. So we did use this tool to drill through the first side of the part here, as you can see. And then we just came back with the tap drill and the slitting saw to put in this second slot here. You can see we're on the cutting the actual parts. This is a setup part. I did bore one of the, the IDs a little bit oversized. Um, so this is a setup part for us at this point. Anytime you scrap a part, keep it and scrap it a couple more times as you're working through the process. So then you don't have to worry about ruining any other components. It gives you that, that get out of jail card or that chance to work through a setup with less. Um, you, know, you don't have to be so worried if you do make a mistake. You already kind of went down that road once. So here we're just using the cutter comp. You can see we're using the diameter value, but we're using it as a, as a wear compensation. So we are just putting in the amount of change we want. So in Fusion, we just set the compensation value to wear, and then it still compensates for the radius of the tool for us, but then it gives us that ability to do a wear compensation in the control. So here's some footage of the adaptive roughing pass. All this stuff ran real well. We used a full depth of cut. I think we were at a 50,000 step over on this. You'll see here, this is kind of running slow. This is the first time through it. So right about here, I speed it up to full speed, and then I just let it cut from here out. We are just breaking that edge on the top of those posts. Just using a little drill mill, a little quarter inch drill mill to do that. And then we're just gonna test fit that one more time to make sure that we've got it fitting real nice. Then we come in with the slitting saw. Initially we started out, we had a 30 second wide saw blade that was three inches in diameter. That groove is right around a 16th of an inch, but this is the saw that I had on hand at the time. I programmed a pretty, pretty uh, light depth of cut on this, trying to be conservative. And as you'll see here in a second, I still ran into a problem putting in this feature. If you look at it real close, what you can see is, is the saw blade's actually wobbling. When I set this up, I, di I didn't look hard enough. So when I actually took the saw back apart after I broke it, um, I found a little bit of aluminum chip on the saw blade itself. So that was causing the run out, which caused the excess rubbing and ended up binding up the saw once it got into the deep depth of cut. So here I went ahead, when I, I ordered my replacement saw, I just got the appropriate width, so I am running a 60 thousandths or 16th inch saw here just to put the feature in in one pass. I also increased the fog buster substantially on how much we were putting out. Saw blades like a lot of coolants and a lot of flushing to keep them cool and, and lubricated so they don't rub and get warm and stick to the part. So I, I definitely turned up the coolant on the second try. Here we're loading OP2. We have to put a cross hole in for the clamping of the, on the shaft for this. So we just clamp it in a little pocket we cut. We're using a, a little bump stop on the right side to just locate the part consistently. Here I cheated a little bit again. I used that same chamfer drill mill tool to drill the clearance hole for, it's a six millimeter thread, so the quarter inch works as a clearance drill. So I drilled the spot extra deep to get through that first half so that I can just use it to drill through the second for the tap drill size. You can see here I paused a little bit because that holder got real close, so I kind of just stopped it there to check to make sure that my tool wouldn't hit part or the holder would rub on the part. And here we're just coming back with the tap drill for the M6. We're just doing a chip breaking cycle on this. Everything worked pretty nice. It drilled real nice. The spot drill worked pretty well. I was hoping it would. I didn't want to have to add a second drill bit just to drill the clearance hole to come back and drill the, the tap drill size. So I'm pretty thankful that the spot drill worked for both. Here we are um, putting the slot in the second op. So this only goes through half of the part. We kind of took the same approach, extra coolant on this, and used the same speeds and feeds and everything we ran on the initial first stop. And didn't really run into problems after that first one. We just made sure we had everything cleaned up properly with the saw when we assembled it. 
So here we got the part, it's all wrapped up, ready to go put this thing to use. Pretty happy with how it looks and how it turned out and all the ops. The runtime on it was real reasonable. The slowest part of the whole process was this running the slitting saw. As I mentioned, I did take that pretty conservative just because I didn't want to run into problems. And even though I did run into problems with it, it everything ended up working out pretty well in the end. So, uh, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I enjoyed this project. It was fun. Worked through a couple lathe ops and a couple mill ops. Ran into some problems along the way. Um, but it was, it was definitely fun being able to work through everything and, and make a nice component when you're all done. Um, so if you want to check out some other of our YouTube channels, you can do that here. Or feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel here.